One thing to understand about Solana that's unique compared to other blockchains you might have worked with is that everything is an account. And if you think about like a Linux file system, I'm not sure if you guys know about Linux file systems, but basically you can see from the diagram, everything on a Linux operating system is a file. And that comes in really handy because it's really simple, right? Like everything that you're going to do on Linux is a file. You might have a program that's comprised of many, many files, but ultimately everything boils down to a file. So in a sense, you can think of the way Solana indexes state data as pretty similar to a Linux operating system. There's obviously a ton of caveats there, but that helps to kind of like picture what's going on. So any index of data that you're storing on Solana's blockchain goes into what's called an account. And that account has an address. And that address is how Solana's runtime will actually find the data. So back on the previous slide, when I said that like you're gonna register your public key as a blockchain address, that's what you're doing. And when you do that, it will create an account at a specific location on the blockchain defined by the address. And it'll basically have these five fields. So you've got LAN ports, you've got owner, executable data, and rent epic. Now, I see we have a question in here. Um, yeah, we'll have a recording. Um, so anyway, as you can probably figure out, if you don't know what LAN ports are, LAN ports are the smaller denomination of soul. So like Ethereum, the ETH token breaks down to like Gwei and Wei. Um, Solana, Sol breaks down to LAN ports. And it's like a billion or like 10 billion. I forget exactly how many LAN ports are in a Sol. But it's the smaller denomination. And it's all recorded in LAN ports on the runtime. So that's all that means. It's just the balance of that account. And since Sol or LAN ports is the native token, every single thing. Yes, LAN port is like sent kind of. It's just way smaller. Um, so every single account that you have on Solana has a LAN port balance. And that actually ties into the rent field, the rent epic field. So one thing that Solana kind of utilizes for the moment, and they're actually in the process of maybe changing this, is when you want to store data on its blockchain, you have to essentially pay for it. You don't have to pay what's called rent. And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense because all of the state data that's being stored on the chain has to be distributed across all the validators hardware, right? And they pay for that. So like there's kind of like a system going where like depending on how much of that hardware space you aim to take up, you have to pay rent. Now, one thing that Solana engineers kind of like put into place earlier in 2022 was the idea of rent exemption. In fact, I think it's older than that, but now it's like it's a little bit more of a standardized thing. If you put in two years worth of rent, your account doesn't get charged rent. So it, it sounds kind of silly. And to be honest with you, maybe it is, which is exactly why they're working on improvements on that. But for now, all you have to know is based on the size of your account, you're going to get charged a certain amount of rent and you have to keep that amount in your account's balance to prevent any kind of withdrawals to pay rent. A little confusing, but again, it's explained in the workshop, like read me and stuff a little bit more. But um, when you go to see the code, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And we'll show that in a second. So the other three fields, executable is just a Boolean. It means, is this account a smart contract or no? Obviously, if executable is true, that means it is a smart contract. And yes, I saw your message in here. Everything is account. It literally is. Everything is an account, including smart contracts, which is why you have the executable field. Because even your programs are accounts just inside those accounts lives a smart contract. So literally everything on Solana is an actual account from smart contracts to your wallet, to any kind of custom data, all accounts. And then the data field is just your own custom data. So like these are the default fields that come with every single Solana account, no matter what. And then inside that data field is what you've custom put in there. So if it's a smart contract, that's where your smart contract code lives. If it's just like a data storing account, like if you're keeping some fields about like a person's information or whatever, that's where it gets put in and it's in the form of bytes. And the last field that we want to talk about is the owner field. So this concept can be a tad confusing at first, but basically on Solana, every single account is owned by a smart contract, even smart contracts, right? Like they're owned by a program. So 
default when you have like a Solana wallet, like if you set up like a Phantom or a Soulflare or a Glow wallet, even for the first time, that wallet, even though you hold the keys, is owned by the system program. And the system program is designed to make sure that you have signed any changes to that account before. So like if you think about like sending soul to somebody, like the system program in theory could just take soul from your account if it wanted to, but it's written in a way that you have to sign that transaction and it'll check to make sure, like we talked about with the key pairs, that your private key did in fact sign it. So it's it's protected by your private key. But the reason I bring that up is because if you write your own smart contract and you have accounts that are owned by your own smart contract, your smart contract can take soul from those accounts at will with no permission. So it's really important to remember when we get to program stuff later that you got to add really special safeguards to make sure that those accounts can't be compromised. 